Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have another kind of follow-up video to a previous video I've made comparing Apache Iceberg and Apache Hootie. And I've also talked about Delta Lake on this channel, but I wanted to kind of sum everything up in just one comprehensive video assessing what have become pretty much the standards in Delta Data Lake, sorry, not Delta Lake, I'm already thinking about that, uh, but Data Lake storage formats. Um, these are really good ways, uh, you know, good frameworks to handle large data sets that are stored on distributed storage systems like, you know, object storage, uh, Google Cloud object storage, Amazon S3, Azure Blob storage, uh, you know, Delta Lake Databricks, wherever you're storing it. Um, these are really great tools for handling all that unstructured data in all those different locations um, and being able to do that efficiently, provide querying capabilities, provide a standardized file format, um, tracking metadata and changes, which as everyone who's worked with data lakes knows, really crucial to track all that metadata if you want to avoid a data swamp. So what I'm going to talk about here is just go through three of these three different services, talk about, hey, how do each of them work? what are their pros and cons of each approach, and then talk about the best use cases for each of these tools. So you can get a sense of, hey, this is what the tool I need for my use case um, because it has these qualities and doesn't have these qualities. Because, well, you know, they all are just object storage, kind of, you know, data lake uh, storage formats. They all have their different kinks and quirks that make them either better or worse in certain scenarios. So without further ado, let's get started with Apache Iceberg. So Apache Iceberg is a table format that's designed for large scale data sets and distributed file systems. Um, and you can see how it works here where it has a robust mechanism for metadata management where it's decoupled from the underlying storage. So you actually have a metadata layer that is referenced and managed through an Iceberg catalog that structures all your data into metadata files, manifest files, and then there's the data layer where actually the data files are contained. And so the metadata files capture all the essential details around scheme evolution, partitioning, <clears throat> the details of the underlying files. Um, and then the manifest files list those different data files, the actual metadata of those different data objects, but the actual data is still stored in the data files. You have an abstraction of the data through the manifest files, and then that abstraction is organized through the metadata files. Um, and it, Iceberg also uses a snapshot-based approach. So you can, you know, do things like reverse back in time to a previous uh, timestamp um, and also ensure acid compliance. So atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability by with every new write operation, creating a new snapshot so you can see each change in the database and how it evolved from a previous state. Um, and that kind of leads to one of its most significant advantages, which is its support for advanced schema evolution. Users can add, delete, rename, modify fields without needing to rewrite an entire table and that time travel capability enables the querying of historical versions of the data, which is really useful if you need to debug or you know, need to pull uh, later or earlier versions of the data for compliance purposes. Um, and it, additionally, its dynamic partitioning strategy eliminates the need for predefined partitions. So they're generated as data is, in, is brought in, um, and that also helps to enhance query performance. Additionally, Iceberg is very versatile um, It integrates pretty seamlessly with Spark, Presto, Flink, um, and really most different date tools on the market now, um, Snowflake especially. Um, but it does come with a few different challenges. Um, number one is setting this up requires really careful configuration. Um, you need to figure out how it's gonna integrate with different storage and compute engines. And as a relatively newer tool um, to competitors like Delta Lake, it does have a slightly less mature ecosystem, but that gap is rapidly closing um, because you do have a lot of companies and like Snowflake that are adopting Iceberg as their standard for open data storage. Um, but in summation, these scenarios that Iceberg is best suited for are when you need to have really high scalability and multi-engine multi support. Um, because it's so adaptable, it really excels in environments that have frequent scheme evolution or parti partitioning changes. So things like cloud native or distributed analytics workflows, um, where you're constantly going to be changing and slicing and dicing data in different ways to actually understand it better. Now, next up, we have Apache Hootie. Um, and Hootie, which stands for Hadoop, Upsert, Delete, and Incremental, is kind of a more older solution um, designed to optimize data lakes for streaming data ingestion. Um, and obviously by the name suggests was built around Apache Hadoop. Um, and Hootie supports two primary storage formats. You have copy on write where data updates involve rewriting files 
and merge on read, where new data is appended in Delta files that are merged during read operations. I mean, you can see you all have different versions based on what kind of you know update you did. And this dual format design makes Hootie very adaptable to different workload requirements. Um, it manages a timeline of transactions and retains the metadata of each of these transactions. You can see you know, that happens here with the different reads stored, the version that they were reading from, um, how exactly, uh, you know, when the commit was after 10.10. Um, and it, because of this, it's able to support incremental data processing um, and allow for you know, real-time updates and querying. Um, and Hootie really shines in its ability to handle those frequent data modifications like updates, deletes, um, and it's built-in indexing improves performance for those operations as well. So it's really designed around, hey, this data is going to be frequently updated, um, and it's really particularly effective, obviously, for mutable data sets that need to be uh, updated on a regular basis. Um, additionally, Hootie has a really strong integration with Spark um, and Hive, but mainly Spark is, is what you're probably going to be using in today's day and age. Um, but it makes it a really natural choice for operating within the Hadoop ecosystem as well um, if you're using, still using Hadoop. Um, and then the merge on read format, unfortunately, can introduce some complexity. Um, so with great power comes great responsibility. It does require really careful tuning to balance write and read performance, um, you know, because you're just constantly appending data to a new file. Um, and the copy on write approach, which is might be similar, simpler, can also lead to a heavy write overhead for large updates. Um, so there are some trade-offs with this kind of high adaptability. You are going to introduce additional complexity and just additional compute overhead. Um, and Hootie is not nearly as supportive of multi-engine environments. Um, it isn't really as well integrated with most cloud services um, because it's been primarily focused on Spark and Hive. Um, and Hootie, I would say, is most effective in use cases that are things like streaming data ingestion and real-time dashboards. Um, you know, it's really well suited for those applications because they require frequent incremental updates um, or they might operate in Hadoop-centric environments leveraging Spark or Hive. If you're using Hadoop, you probably want to be using Apache Hootie as your data storage format. Now, finally, we have the Delta Lake format. Um, and Delta Lake works a little bit differently in that it's a transactional storage layer built on top of data lakes. Um, and it ensures asset compliance by maintaining a transaction log known as Delta Log, um, which you can see here, uh, which tracks all changes to a Delta table. The Delta Lake uses Parquet as its underlying storage format and enforces schema on write. So when you ingest data, it needs to be in the proper schemas to prevent bad data ingestion. And one of Delta Lake's most notable features is that it has the ability to unify batch and streaming data processing, allowing users to switch between or combine these modes. Um, and it also Rely, strengths rely in its mature ecosystem. Uh, Databricks has really put a ton of effort into developing uh, Delta. And so it has a lot of features and functionality kind of built into it, uh, especially if you're already using Databricks, um, it's really well designed to work well with Databricks. Um, it has robust transactional guarantees and will also help simplify complex pipelines that offer and require both batch and real-time processing because you can use Databricks for that as that processing engine. So it's a really good choice to kind of manage your data alongside your analytics engine. If you're already using Databricks, um, you can you know, run your analytics and machine learning workflows directly alongside where all your data is being stored and managed, which is in Delta Lake. Um, and then Delta Lake will maintain a complete historical changes to the data. So you can you know, roll back um, to any point in time, which helps with auditing and also ensuring data lineage um, at the end of the day. However, unfortunately, Delta Lake also has limitations. Um, it's really, really closely tied to the Databricks ecosystem. So if you're not already bought into Databricks, it's going to be, you know, you, you will need to buy into Databricks essentially to get a lot of value out of Delta Lake. Um, it also does result in a bit of vendor lock-in because, you know, D Databricks is the provider of Delta Lake. And if you want to use Delta Lake, you pretty much need to use Databricks. Um, so while it does integrate well with Apache Spark, its support for com other compute engines is pretty limited. Um, and then also scheme evolution in Delta Lake is much less flexible um, compared to Iceberg. Um, it's a lot stricter in terms of read on write and requires explicit handling where you need to you know, restructure the schema yourself for certain changes. Um, but Delta Lake is really ideal for workloads that demand high consistency and transactional guarantees. Um, it's really effective for pipelines that you know are combining batch and streaming data and you need to be able to quickly see, okay, you know, what I need to go find this table, make this really small update without pulling all the data um, from that table. And 
organizations that are already using a ton of the Databricks ecosystem are going to find Delta Lake to be a pretty natural and powerful extension of their existing infrastructure. Um, and that is really all I had for you today. I just wanted to kind of make a summation video of these three tools, go over their distinct advantages, disadvantages, um, and just help you get a sense for, based on your current architecture and needs, which one might be best for your organization. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.